Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Candlewick Green Show. With special guest stars, Nick Miller. The comedian. And the shakers. So sit back and enjoy comedy, nostalgia, and music with... Liverpool, the Mersey town. A sound that means something different from what it did when Liverpool was just an important port. Because now, much to its surprise, the great northern city has got a new industry, as incongruous as the soot on its classical buildings. Hi everybody, you're probably wondering why we're showing you this video of Liverpool. It's because I'm on it. In 1964, Pathé News were filming this document in Liverpool. And I just happened to be there with my good friend, John Rome. Incidentally, his father used to own Rome's Photographers in London Road, Liverpool, for those who know it. In fact, Derek and I had our first passport photos taken there in 1966. Not together, because we didn't know each other then. Could have been in there together for all we know. Every Wednesday afternoon, John Rome and I would skip school and go to the lunchtime sessions at the cavern. And afterwards, we'd call into NEMS music stores to listen to the latest records. NEMS was owned by Brian Epstein. He was the manager of the Beatles. And the young lady here is Frida Kelly. That's the lady in the booth. She was known as the Kelly, the Beatles secretary. John and I used to nip into the Wimpy Burger store in Lime Street, Liverpool, and then move on to the cabin. One day we were there and a chap came in and said, would you like to help him make a documentary about pretending to have your hair cut? And if we did, he'd pay for our burgers. What was there to think about? A burger used to cost me, cost me a whole week's pocket money. So we pretended to go into the shop, which was two doors down from the Wimpy shop. In fact, that's John walking in. And that's him there, the blonde guy. And that's me next to him. The one with the big nose. <laughs> Whatever happened to that nose? Whatever happened to my hair? Oh dear. I don't miss the nose, but I do miss the hair. <laughs> While I'm being sentimental, let's go and visit the cavern again. And here we are, we're going to visit our good friends, the one and only, the Shakers. <laughs> Thanks guys. We're going to take a quick break now, but we'll be right back after this. Moving there, lad. I'm watching you. Don't do it. And what 
What are you up to, you horrible little man? Oh, having a cup of rosy lee, Sergeant. Cup of what? PG Tech Sergeant 9. Oh, that's different then, lad, ain't it? When a good cup of tea really counts, you're right to drink good fun PG tips. It's the tea you can really taste. Right, lad. Now you've had your PG, you look about ready for a spot of PT. At the double, you want a man! <laughs> On your last trip, did you discover what the Earth people eat? They eat a great many of these. They peel them with their metal knives. Boil them for 20 of their minutes. Then they smash them all to bits. They are clearly the most primitive people. For much get smash. some of the best comedians in the business and the next one is no exception this is a clip taken from the Daz O'Connor show of his infamous Noddy sketch so here he is, Mick Miller that is, I've got here that's the same I've got here and that's the reason he's been hovering with that you did something in one of my shows oh, about ten years ago and I laughed at it nonsense if I remember right, I don't remember all of it it's a, a guy on the radio doing a children's show it's, it's Noddy, Noddy, yeah I go on the radio and he's been doing this Noddy programme for 20 years, every Monday morning, on the radio, hates kids, and he's an alcoholic. <laughs> and he's been doing it for 20 years, don't forget it's on the radio, and I think it sounds something like this. Morning kids, Noddy show. Are you all listening to radios? Well, what does little Noddy do today? He wakes up, doesn't he? Goes in the bathroom for a wash. Can you hear little Noddy? Fell in the sink with water. <laughs> Little Noddy's got a big sink, hasn't he? <laughs> he said, sod it, I'll have a bath. <laughs> then he goes downstairs for his breakfast. <laughs> There's an milkman. <laughs> Pours himself a cup of tea. Pulled himself some toast. <laughs> and, and a runny egg. <laughs> then he got in his car. And he's going on in his hauling days. To Scotty Bottle and. <laughs> met Mr. Scotty's Red Indian. Hawk Eyes and You. <laughs> Then he met the scouts for them, Ian. <laughs> Hang on, Mo. <laughs> Went to the cake shop in Glasgow. He said, is that a custard on meringue? He said, no, you're not wrong. It's a custard. <laughs> <laughs> Went to the gift shop in Glasgow and he saw these antlers on the wall. He said, are they off a deer? She said, no, they're quite cheap. <laughs> Driving along, and he stopped at the Toy Town Arms. He walked to the Toy Town Arms, and they're all there, Bill and Ben. And Bill said, Slobber, 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 you can't beat the memories you gave me, the sweet, sweet memories you gave me. You can't beat the memories you gave me. Just a little story about when we were on the Ken Dodge show in Skegness. Basically, we were supporting him, finished the show, and after the show, got talking to him, and he said, 
Are you working next week? I said, oh yes, Ken, we're at uh, Park Hall, Charnock Richard, which is just off the M6. He said, oh, lovely club, lovely club. He said, tell you what, he said, I'll pop down and see you. Yeah. He said, just mention my name on the door. He said, you know, they know me there, but mention them on the door and, and get me a nice table. I said, no problem, Ken, brilliant. So, he said, see you Wednesday. He said, see you Wednesday now. Bye. Went out and told the lads in the car. I said, lads, Ken Dodd's come to see us on Wednesday at Parkour. Brilliant, brilliant. So Dave, our, our roadie was there, Dave Mulholland. I said, Dave, will you get him a nice table and just mention his name on the door he's coming in. Obviously, they're going to know it's Doddy. But just mention. He said, yeah, no problem. So it went on to the Wednesday. We're all excited. It would be great this tonight. So I rang Dave and said, uh, Dave, what time are we on? He said, well, you're not top of the bill tonight. Someone else is top of the bill. You're on at nine o'clock and they're on at about half ten. I said, oh, fine. I said, well, who's top of the bill? He said, Ken Dodd. I went, oh. He sucked me right, right in and put me out to dry. So when I got to the club, I went into his dressing room. I said, how you can? He said, oh, there you are. He said, he didn't leave me name on the door. I had a right job getting in. Anyway, <laughs> so he just sucked me in and blew me out, you know. I told the lads, said, we're not stopping the bell. It's Ken Dodd. But laugh, I just laughed and laughed. So that was us with, oh, ho, Doddy! <laughs> I have a little story. Do you remember when we were playing in Watford and when I was packing the car to come home, I put all the money in a briefcase on top of the car and then packed all the suitcases into the car. Then when we got back to Liverpool and we started unloading it, no briefcase. I'd forgotten to put it in the boot. So if looks could kill, <laughs> I think you're going to hang me. But it turned out okay. Because some kind soul had found it on a roundabout and handed it into the police station. And the police phoned us up and said, We've got a briefcase full of money here. Come and collect it. God. <laughs> My most embarrassing time on stage ever. And I bet not many people have had something like this happen to them, just as embarrassing as this. So once again, my most embarrassing time on stage ever. We were at the Pier Theatre, Skegness. It was a Forrester George production, and it was Ken Dodd was top of the bill. On the bill was also a ventriloquist called Jack Beckett. I remember that name, Jack Beckett. <laughs> The plan was, when we finished our spot, I would stay on stage and introduce Jack Beckett. When we finished our act, I was still dressed up as Mick Jagger and the other, rest of the guys were dressed up as Slade. So they all went off back to the dressing room and I was left there to say something like, the next act is Jack Beckett. The only thing is, Jack Beckett gave me a heck of a lot of lines to say. It was something like, and now I'm going to introduce a man who's appeared at Las Vegas. He's toured the world, the London Palladium, the talk of the north, the talk of the town. He's one of the world's top ventriloquists. Please welcome Jack Beckett. Now my problem was, when he told me this line, it had to be exact, I kept thinking, escapologist, trapezist, what is, what is he, what is he, he's a ventriloquist and I had to keep reminding myself, ventriloquist and I was really worried about this, so anyway, <laughs> anyway, when we finished the act, he was in the wings with his wife, she didn't come on stage and he had his, his dummy, I think he was called Willie Drink It All, he came on drunk, Willie, and I thought, right, and I was Mick Jack. Don't forget, I'm all full of adrenaline and everything. There's a thousand of people in the audience, all looking, just me on the stage. I said, right, the next act, next act to come on stage. And I'm worried sick. 
about ventriloquist. He's been, you know, all over the world. The start of the London Palladium, Las Vegas, the talk of the town, the London Night Out, blah, blah, blah. Please welcome one of the world's top ventriloquist. I did it. <laughs> ventriloquist. Mr. One of the top ventriloquists. Please welcome... I couldn't remember his bloody name. <laughs> and I, I laughed. He was like, ha, <laughs> yeah. So here he is, then. He's in the race. He's, Come on now. You think I've forgotten his name, don't you? <laughs> oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> I couldn't remember his name. And there was no one there to help me. And I had one more go. So here he is. <laughs> and started, <laughs> and he, he rushed on stage with his with his dummy and a very good line he said he said i don't know who's drunk me or him <laughs> this is the dummy <laughs> i'm gonna walk past his wife in the ring she gave me daggers i just couldn't remember i was so over the moon for <laughs> ventriloquist <laughs> and that was the worst time ever with just a thousand or two people just sitting there looking at me. <laughs> but I got to the dressing room, the lads were all blah, 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 blah. Yeah, whatever. And I told them, to go, what? I said, you didn't see me. I just died a thousand deaths. <laughs> Do you remember that, lads? I think we'd best take a break now and let the lads recover. We'll be back right after this. Butlins, the big holiday, where everyone enjoys everything at no extra cost, like the monorail at Butlin Skegness. It's a big holiday for kiddies with free swimming, boating, and games galore, not to mention the big free rides. It's a big holiday for parents, too, with freedom to enjoy carefree days and fabulous evenings of entertainment. It's a big holiday for everyone with everything to enjoy at Butlins. And remember, no extras to pay. Good night, old Rosinis. Back to part three, continuing the uh, Jerry Member theme. Um, people used to ask us, "What do we do in between shows? What do we get up to?" Well, to be honest with you, I found a little clip, and basically it's been posted before this one. But I thought you might like to see. It. It's only very short. Have a look at this. You got to see us. Twenty C. I'll go ten blind. Alan doesn't frighten me. Okay. Nobody frightens me. I'll go ten blind. Twenty again. Right. Just not bothered. End of the season money. Refusals, twaddle. Tell <laughs> <laughs> <Ted> twaddle. <laughs> this is end of the season money anyway. Doesn't bother me. Ten blind. Twaddle. It's their money anyway. Same. Twenty. Twenty same. Facial expressions if you want, Dex, over there from Alan. Already two pound fifty down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, I owe it to the red ones there. Derek, do you want to look at my hand? I owe it twenty. Because I'm looking at my hand. Okay. Right? Can you see it? Yeah. I know I'll get the camera. Well, this is the last clip that we've got for now of Jerry Member Time. And I've taken this clip out of a pretty bad VHS tape that we've done at Blackwell South Pier. For those of you that want to watch the whole tape, it's, it's watchable, but it jumps. But for those of you that want to watch it, I will be posting it. But the reason I've shown you this clip is just to show you just how fantastic a keyboard player Dudley Jones was. Really fantastic. Hope you enjoyed this.
how about that? Fantastic. That was Dudley Jones. What a great keyboard player, what a great guy. And very sadly missed. Brilliant Dudley, brilliant. I've always wanted to be a chauffeur. See if anybody recognises the guy on the left hand side in the black suit. The handsome one. country without being here to welcome you, do you? I just didn't want to put you to any trouble. Trouble? Oh, look at you. You look... Oh, you look bonnet. <laughs> now, don't look at me. I look a mess. Mom. Oh, Mum, this is Carrie Meyer. Uh, my mother, Audrey Roberts. I've heard a lot about you, Mrs. Roberts. Oh. Jimmy always well secretive. Well, they are, aren't they, lads? They can also be... Mum, uh, Carrie works with me. She's our leading negotiator. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were delighted to meet you, Mrs. Roberts. I'm the same to you, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, look, Mum, we already got a car, and I've got to get checked into the hotel because hotel? I... Hotel? Oh, no, Stephen, you can't stay in a hotel. Um, my husband is the ex-mayor, you see, Carrie, and you can't argue with authority, can you? Well, you must have learnt that from working with my son. Oh, absolutely. Listen, Mum, I'd love to... Stephen, come on. Just a few days, at least. Oh, look, we've only got a timetable meeting today, and I can handle that, just about. Phone in, and we'll fix tomorrow. Thanks. No problem. Okay, Ma. Take me home. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Roberts. I'll talk to you later, Stephen. Is there something you're keeping from, Ma? Behave. <laughs> <laughs> huh. And now back to comedy with... The Comedians! Between a Rockweiler pissing up your leg and a Cocker Spaniel pissing up your leg. You let the Rockweiler finish. <laughs> Before I start, is there any Germans in? <laughs> Come on. I was in Butlins last week and there was 20 of them. Butlins, yeah. I thought they liked camps. <laughs> You get it? Go on, put your hands up to Germans. Put two hands up and then I'll recognise you. Ladies and gentlemen, I've had a Barney with a woman in the post office. I took a parcel in. She said, this is too heavy, you need another stamp. I said, another stamp will make it heavier. Oh, there's more. She gave me this stamp. She said, do you want to stick it on yourself? I said, no, I want to stick it on the parcel. <laughs> and I was coming out and this woman came up. She said, could you see me across the road? I said, hang on, I'll run over and have a look. Oh, that Prince Charles, he'll never be king, will he? Imagine the size of the stamp. <laughs> the, uh... The coins that have handles on them. <laughs> I went to one of them seafood stalls. Have you ever tried to eat a whelk? Have you ever tried a whelk? I was chewing it for four and a half hours. 
I took it out of my mouth, there wasn't a mark on it. <laughs> and the other little proof, I went into a cobbler's. He went into a cobbler's with a pair of boots. He said, I want these sold. He came back the next day, the cobbler gave me a dollar, he said, I've sold them. <laughs> And there was another Liverpool fella. These jokes are full of Liverpool fellas, eh? He went into a photographer's. <laughs> went into a photographer's with a photograph of his dad. He said, I want this photograph of my dad reproducing. But I want you to do him without the ball of hat. So his dad had a ball of hat on. And the photographer, being very obliging, he went, yes, sir, certainly, sir, yes, sir. I think we can manage that, sir. And just as he was going out, he said, oh, by the way, sir, what way did your father have his hair parted? He said, well, you know that when you take the bowl of that off. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a big bottle of brown beer? What kind of A big bottle of brown beer and some brown bread and butter or a shandy? A shandy. <laughs> Now you're going to do the alphabet backwards. Huh? The alphabet, 26 letters of the alphabet. Are you going to do the alphabet backwards? No. Good, good. I'll tell you what to do. Sing, sing. Sing a little song to the ladies and gentlemen. What would you like to sing? What do you know? Just, don't mess about. Just sing a little song. What would you like to sing? When the red, red robin comes, gob, gob, gobbing. <laughs> what about the Irishman was on that program, Mastermind? And Maggoty Magazine said, <laughs> Who was born in the stable and had thousands of followers? He said, Red Rum. <laughs> he said, Finish the following song title. Old MacDonald had it, he could farm. Spell it, he said, Eo, Eo, Eo. He said, name two days of the week beginning with T. He said, today and tomorrow. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> Even I laugh and I hear them every night. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching The Comedian. <laughs> Enjoyed the show. We're sorry, it was time to go. We've been going in and out of style, but we've always tried to make you smile. So if you've really had some fun, go out and tell everyone about the Candle with Green show. We're going to finish off now with a song we did on the Tom of Fun show. See you all next time. This is it. This is it. This I know is the real thing. I can't explain what I'm feeling. I'm lost for words. Stand by me, babe You're on the way This is it This is it Well, this I will know is the real thing And I can't explain what I'm feeling I'm lost for words I'm in a day Stand by me, babe You're on the way The touch of you Is something new Nobody else could make me feel the way you do 
It's heavenly, it's ecstasy The way you make me feel when you make love to me Can't you see, can't you see This is it, this is it. Whoa. This all I know is the real thing And I can't explain what I'm feeling I'm lost for words I'm not of you is something you nobody else could make me feel the way you do it's heavenly it's ecstasy the way you make me feel when you make love to me can't you see can't you see this is it oh, this I don't know is the real thing and I can't explain what I'm feeling I'm lost for words Gracias,